You know, I gotta be honest here. I genuinely thought Haley was gonna take the vote on who would be next for a video. But fine. You wanna talk about Steve? Then let's talk about Steve. Roll the intro clip. It wasn't me! My sensitive tummy can't handle that stuff. I have to water down my Sprite. This wasn't just a regular monster energy drink, Steve. This was Baller's Blend Punch, Steve. A high-performance fuel inspired by the streets and optimized for the true baller. Oh, wait. You're a fake-ass baller, if anything. Ah! Well, I won't keep you from your little tea party. Later, cucks. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Void Theater. As always, I'm your host, Alexander, and we're finally back with another character study, and more importantly, another American Dad character study. And, of course, we're talking about the prodigal son of the Smith family, Steve Smith. Now, I know that I tend to say this a lot when it comes to the Smith family, but Steve might genuinely be one of the weirdest characters in the show for a variety of reasons. One of which being that, out of all the Smith family members, Steve is one of the only ones who's never really had a genuine character change, or if we're being honest, a genuine character arc. And this is especially obvious when you compare him to characters like Roger, who went from being a side character to arguably the face of the show, Stan, who while still maintaining that core conservative characteristics, toned down drastically over the course, and Rogu, who... well, Rogu tries. I, uh... I don't think there's any light behind those eyes, but he's... he's, you know, he, he's there. Kinda hard to have a character arc when your entire character is just a giant joke. But then there's Steve, who despite taking up, at this point I would give a rough estimate of a third of the show, is always just... Steve. He may get smaller adjustments or even take on a new persona, but he never deviates from his core character and oftentimes reverts back to it. But why is that? Well, that's what we're here to talk about. The characteristics of Steve, the role he plays in the show overall, his surprising lack of character development, and finally, how all those factors put together not only helped him shape the show, but also how despite all that, he's managed to become arguably one of the most iconic and popular characters in the series. And as always, if you enjoy the video, be sure to like it and subscribe for more content like this. But without any further ado, we can begin. So let's raise the curtain, put this boy on stage, and see what he has to say. Alright, so before we start, and because I know someone will bring it up, let's talk about arguably the biggest change in Steve's character. That being his first, and technically last, girlfriend, Debbie. Now I want to make this clear before we get too deep into this. I'm not saying that Steve never had any character arcs or any major changes in the show. It's just that unlike Haley, Roger, or even Jeff, the changes Steve does end up getting are far less impactful. And Debbie, being one of them, is also the best example of that. For the people who don't remember Debbie, and honestly why would you, it's been around 10 plus years since she had any relevance, she was the somewhat on-again, off-again girlfriend of Steve. She was never a major player in the show, and while she never really took a lot of episodes, one of her biggest contributions was the fact that, again, she was the first real girlfriend for Steve. Something that the show has yet to actually attempt again outside of one-off episodes and slight gags. But like we'll go over with some of the other changes Steve occasionally gets, Debbie never really amounted to anything or left any real lasting impression on his character. In a very weird turn of events, I don't even think I can call her a character arc for Steve because she's not. A character arc implies change or growth even if the character falls back in the same place after a while. Debbie never really influenced Steve or left any real lasting impression. She's not a character arc, she's a set piece given life with a personality to match. And the fact is, is that this isn't a one-time thing. Albeit smaller in scale, this is arguably one of Steve's most recurring tropes. Even up to the more recent seasons, this still happens. And while I would love to take an extended break and talk about how Ollie is a great character, it would cut into the point I'm making. Which is that like most things that happen to Steve that could be character arcs, most don't ever seem to matter. And yes, before someone inevitably types it in the comments, this does include Wheels and the Lake Man. Because even that doesn't really change him and falls into the same issue that Debbie's situation did. Which is that at the end of the day, it's just Steve in a new environment. In fact, one of the recurring jokes of the duo is that Steve frequently breaks character and defaults back to his base personality. Even in a scenario where Steve has to be someone else, he can't stop being Steve. But why is that? Why is it in a show where nearly every other character has had some major change, why does Steve always stay the same? And for that, we have to look at tropes. Now in the very first video I did on American Dad, I talked about how the show has a tendency to buck the tropes of the animated sitcom genre. And if you've seen any of the other follow-ups I've done on individual characters, well, first of all, thank you, I tried to make those videos both informative and entertaining, 
But I also mentioned that while a lot of the characters tend to drastically change over the course of the show, they still manage to always stay true to their core trope. Stan at his core is the idiot father trope with the conservative parent trope. Roger still serves as the lovable pet despite being the face of the show now, and yes, Roger is the pet. If I had to put Klaus anywhere, he's more hated character than he is a pet, but I'll cover that when he gets his video. The point I'm making is that every character, no matter how far or how drastically they change, always kept that core essence of the trope. It's something that's helped the show grow and flourish because it essentially meant that any character could develop into something more, just with the stipulation that the trope they were designed with actually, you know, changes or is allowed to change. And that little detail brings us to the crucial part of Steve's character. Because the truth is, is that Steve is unfortunately in the position of the younger sibling or baby role of the show. And for those that may be confused by what I just described, well, let me explain. See, the younger sibling or baby character types are two different character arcs usually seen in shows, but both have the same serious flaw in them, which is that they can't drastically change. Case in point, both Stewie and Chris are these two tropes personified, and when you look at their character compared to Meg, it's painfully obvious how stagnated they've become. See, whereas Meg has gone from the abused daughter to arguably one of the smartest characters in the show, and even at times become the abuser herself, both Stewie and Chris have realistically had no significant changes, and the same thing happened on American Dad. While other characters like Haley have almost completely shifted from their original concept designs, Steve simply stays the same way he is. And again, the reason for that is because this trope fundamentally can't change. The point of a baby character is to, shockingly, be the baby. It's why characters like Maggie and Stewie never seem to age. To change their age would be to fundamentally change the core of their character. It's something that Family Guy points out rather frequently with Stewie, and with Steve he has it twice as bad since, again, he's a combination of these two ideas. Meaning that anything that could potentially change him or add to it is kind of always sidelined to keep him at his base standard. Something that the show writers themselves have mentioned since they've talked about how Steve is always written with the idea of being either 8 or 16 which becomes glaringly more obvious when you look at him over the course of the show. Now, I want to reiterate that this doesn't mean that Steve never shows any difference or growth in character. The truth is that over the course of the show, he has had minor changes in his personality. He's become far more competitive in the same vein as Stan, and there are even times when he's shown to have a mean streak a la Roger. But again, these moments are so far and few in between that you could honestly forget that they exist shorter than being in your favorite episodes, and honestly, even then, you would probably not notice them. But that brings us to the major question of this video. With how standard Steve is, and how little he's actually changed over the course of the show, how has he managed to stay so popular with viewers? And the truth is actually fairly simple, because everything I've listed about him, his lack of growth and change over the course of the series, the fact that what few arcs he has are more like set pieces, this isn't just a lack of direction for Steve, it's also his biggest strength compared to the other family members. By not having Steve change, he essentially becomes the character everyone can lean on. He's a universal straight man to the entire group. He stands consciousness, Francine and Haley's intelligence, Roger's straight man as wheels, and even an occasional friend to Klaus. But keeping him so simple, the writers have essentially given him free reign to slide into any place they want and have it cause no real issues in the show's comedy. Like how in one episode he can act so young that he can go bananas and throw a massive tantrum, and yet in another, not only is he back to being wheels, but he takes it so seriously that even Roger seems off-put by it. What a cool thing to say. I'm a little afraid of you now, but the new vernacular is dynamite. He's so malleable that you can put him anywhere and he'll immediately adapt to it. And you can tell that the writers took that to heart, considering that he's in arguably 90% of the goddamn show. And unlike other characters who fall into these tropes like Stewie and Chris, Steve is allowed to be pushed with it instead of it keeping him stagnant. He may be a one-trick pony, but unlike the other two, his trick works because the writers lean into it and build on it. And in turn, that means that longtime viewers can see all these different facets of his personality even if it stays the same. I would even go as far as saying that by keeping Steve as basic as he is, they also manage to make him one of the most memorable and diverse cast members. You don't get tired of seeing him because you know what you're getting, but you don't know how it's going to be used. If there's anything to take away from this video, it's that while Steve may be one of American Dad's most basic characters, He's also one of its best by simply being Steve. And in a show that's gone from a relatively standard sitcom to one with, Jesus Christ, seven different apocalypses, having a standard might be one of the best things it can have. 
it can keep the show tied to where it started and still let it branch out into new territory. And Steve fits that role perfectly by just being, well, Steve. And with that, we come to the current call on the character study of Steve Smith. This is arguably one of the weirdest ones I've done yet, simply due to the fact that with a character study, I try to figure out how a character grew. Yet here we have a prime example of how one stayed the same and still became almost iconic in his own weird way. But as always, with the current closing, I'll leave you with some questions. How do you feel about Steve as a character compared to the rest of the family? And would you prefer he have some change in his dynamic, or is he perfect where he is now? Leave a comment down below letting me know what you think, and if you enjoyed the content, be sure to like the video and subscribe for more of it. But until next time, I've been your host Alexander, and I hope to see you back in my theater.